you're listening to Transformation at Work, your one-stop guide to Salesforce success. And this is Salesforce Tech Talks, comprehensive deep dives into the art of solutioning and implementation for Salesforce. Our expert squad of developers, solution architects, and industry veterans are breaking open the black box and digging into the possibilities of solution design and architecture. The show is brought to you by Jarrett, a summit-level Salesforce consulting and implementation partner and solutions provider, and I am Jeff Stormer, your host as always. When we talk about the customer experience when buying and servicing a car, there is a difficult truth we need to acknowledge. I don't know how my car's engine works, and if you try and explain it to me, I will leave immediately. Jokes aside, there is very much a knowledge gap between customers and dealerships that needs to be addressed. After all, customer trust is fundamental to the success of any business. But the problem is, even if you like cars, you have to acknowledge they are an extremely complicated thing and they're only getting more so. Your average customer doesn't want to spend hours and hours trying to pick apart technical details or flip page by page through some 400 page product manual trying to find the exact right part they need replaced. And that's a pain point for dealerships because they want to create real lasting relationships with customers, the kind that have them coming back for years and years and vehicles and vehicles to come. But no matter how nice your average dealership is, the process of buying and servicing a car is often unclear and overcomplicated to the point of frustration. But what if it didn't have to be? What if the process could be simple, intuitive, quick even? What if you could say, hey, my car is doing this. And your dealer could pull up a 3D image of your car, point at a broken part and say, this needs to be replaced. And what if in doing so, the dealer could even cross-reference your car's history to be 100% certain of that fact? What if we could throw away this 400-page manual and just have the information we need available right off the bat with easy visual reference points to back it up? Now that is an entirely different kind of customer experience that, again, if I'm putting on my customer hat, makes me feel a little less like skidding off of the lot, but more so excited to work with that dealership. That is taking the car buying and servicing process to a whole new level. And that's possible with the right digital tools at a dealership's disposal. In this episode of Salesforce Tech Talks, we're exploring RenderDraw and how it relates to Salesforce Automotive Cloud. RenderDraw is an application available on the Salesforce App Exchange that provides access to 2D and 3D rendered visualizations, each tied to a newer existing Salesforce record. In this episode, we're figuring out exactly what that means and how automotive dealerships and OEMs can use these visualizations to gain a greater understanding of their customer's vehicle history and how that knowledge can really transform the sales and service experience. Our guests are Eric Pilgrim, CEO of RenderDraw, and Nikhil Bhatia, Jaren's automotive practice lead. Eric has been in the Salesforce ecosystem for over a decade, with the past five years really focused on bringing RenderDraw to market and addressing the needs of automotive and manufacturing organizations. And Nikhil brings over 11 years of experience within the automotive industry in a range of capacities to his current role, which gives him keen insights into the challenges that dealers and original equipment manufacturers, also called OEMs, face as they attempt to bring value to their customers. As for how RenderDraw unlocks that value for dealers and OEMs, it really comes down to those visualizations, those 2D and 3D renderings, and taking some of the complex, intricate realities of both managing a dealership and also servicing and selling vehicles, and allowing them to be digitally visualized for an easier understanding and for quicker identification of parts and actioning of data. Here's Nikhil and Eric with a few examples of how RenderDraw's 2D and 3D visualizations give that power back to the user. We are moving from a very product-centric to a customer-centric mindset. At a dealer level, the million-dollar question for these dealers that I'm interacting with is how can they increase the trust factor between the customer and the dealer, and how can they bridge the gap of a lot of information that the customer ideally thinks of but usually doesn't get the answers to because that requires visualization. Not everybody understands how the car works in detail, et cetera. And, you know, whenever warranty recalls happen or a part needs to be replaced, a lot of those times, these visualization, these part visualizations can be the difference between the customer gaining your trust or not actually having that trust. So that visualization, I think, is a, is a very forward-looking step. And when we talk about Waco 360 in automotive cloud, what is top of mind for me is that we are able to see 
in on one screen what is happening with respect to parts, accessories, warranty. And then as we add an additional layer of visualizations, that only further consolidates the belief and the faith that we have, that we want to make it a very customer-centric industry rather than focusing on the product. Exactly, yeah. Opening that pipeline of communication between the customer is the ultimate of importance for us. And I think the, the mediums, changing the mediums of how that interaction is occurring between the customer and the, the OEM or the dealership in this case really is going to get a lot more data, A, and then B, it's going to improve the communication based off of how that data is being transpired based off of that medium itself. So in a way, based off of adding visualizations, we're allowing the customer to provide us more information. And in a similar sense, the the value is going to be gained based off of grabbing more information and understanding what the customer is really looking after when they're switching out accessories and that kind of thing on the visual. It's no surprise the customer expectations around ease of service are shifting. After all, in virtually every other industry, people are accustomed to being able to view and interact with prospective purchases online via their preferred channels. There's a level of researchability, of personal empowerment that we've come to expect, and that extends to the automotive industry. An Arthur D. Little study even indicates that 70% of customers spend more time online than offline when researching their car purchase. If a dealer could really meaningfully facilitate that process, then as Eric and Nikhil break down here, that is a pretty huge differentiator. As we talk more about omni-channel retail as well, which is I think one of the focus areas for us at Gerund, we are trying to create a system where the brick and mortar store and what is happening on the websites can you know, coexist. So that means if a customer is sitting you know, in the comfort of their homes or in their office or wherever they are, they can still receive up-to-date visualizations of like parts about like a 360 degree view of the dealership or even do virtual test drives or a virtual walk around of the vehicle, uh, whether it's new or used. I think that's, that's going to be huge when it comes to creating a better and better omni-channel experience as we continue uh, to enter into the automotive industry. It's almost as if it's uh, kind of an extension of the brick and mortar itself, right? Like we want to extend that service. You know, these dealerships pride themselves on service most of the time. And really what it comes down to is that that customer interaction shouldn't end when the customer leaves the door. They should be experiencing that level of service and that level of interaction, whether they're at home on their couch or if they're, they're inside the store. And that, that's really what we're trying to obtain with providing those interactions there. Absolutely. I think all I'll say is I think when we talk about customer lifetime value, we talk about the full customer journey, not just the customer buying the car. So this is actually helping us, you know, create that full customer journey, not just when they buy a car or they service a car, but all, all throughout the process, every time the customer interacts with the brand. Which brings us to Render Draw. Here's Eric with a breakdown of exactly what the solution is and how it can help dealers put that power back into their customers' hands and remove some of the friction that comes up in the car buying and servicing process. We focus on providing visual interactions to daily mundane tasks on the Salesforce platform. Most often, this comes with a 2D or 3D element. So when we think about interactions, we don't like customers having to sift through lots of data in order to find what they're looking for. Most of the time, these actions or interactions are better, better suited to be more visualized or interacted with. So when we see something, we see a problem. Oftentimes, those problems are based off of a customer or a user not being able to get that item or get what they're looking for as quickly as they'd like. We think a visual is a much better way of doing things like that. So we start with CAD drawings or uh, 2D drawings or floor plans and really augment that Salesforce experience along with that Salesforce data and visuals uh, to provide a much more streamlined interaction for any end user or customer. We want the customers to see value on day one. For that day one value, we have the ability to import product catalogs via our PDF importer. From there, we actually have the ability to take those images and texts from those uh, product catalogs that are coming from suppliers and all these other different sources and create Salesforce records or update Salesforce records to augment with images and that kind of thing. So day one, we're providing value with that. Going from there, uh, several different ways we, we could think about this. Uh, dealerships kind of have different problems than OEMs, but m for the most part, a dealership's attempting to try and uh, get customers information about the dealership itself, like where to go and find information. And for that, we've got 360 degree virtual tours and interactive floor plans so they can know exactly where they're going. Outside of that, we also have tools for internal for the dealership. So taking a look at a glance of inventory levels based off of the floor map of your inventory or what inventory might be getting a little bit stale based off of how long it's been sitting in a particular position with our 2D floor plan map. 
And then also kind of building up to the, the ultimate, which is 3D virtual interactions. And what we mean by that is we have the ability to allow users to be able to add in and uh, virtualize and visualize what cars they're looking to purchase. And then also what additional accessories they may be looking to purchase right inside of Salesforce. So this could be inside, inside Salesforce internally, or it can be through Salesforce uh, community digital experience portal. Either way, the visualizations are driven by Salesforce data, and we're providing a much better experience for the customers to look and see what kind of products they could build or what kind of products they can buy for their cars uh, alongside the automotive cloud information that they're seeing. Now, you can see how piece by piece, those 2D and 3D visualizations bring a level of value to dealers and OEMs as they attempt to break down something as complex and intricate as a vehicle. But as Eric points out here, what really differentiates RenderDraw is its ability to connect to Salesforce and pull on the incredible amount of data saved in the platform to allow those dealers and OEMs to unlock a greater level of understanding into not just the vehicle, but its driver, its history, and the specific issues that might come with its usage over time. Here's Eric with the breakdown. So we've got a really unique approach to this, both on our 2D solutions and our 3D solutions, both of which really comes down to mapping visual elements to the data that exists inside of Salesforce. So when we think about like a product catalog or we think about a car that somebody has purchased that they want to tell somebody that there's an issue with, both of those are basically their own kind of databases, if you want to think about it like that. So when we think about like a car, for instance, it's a database of different products that need to be either sold or serviced. So for us, it's all about taking those visuals and using them as a data source and connecting those elements inside that data source to the data inside of Salesforce. So there are products that exist inside of Salesforce. There are assets, other record types inside of Salesforce that we utilize through all these automotive workflows. It's our job as this extension and really what we're doing in our app exchange offering is providing a linkage between those processes and those data elements and the visuals that you're choosing to use. So if that happens to be a 2D product catalog that has exploded diagrams, you want to be able to click on elements inside those exploded diagrams to bring up additional information like a product record or ability to add a spare part to cart in a similar fashion that you'd want to when you're clicking on something that's wrong with your car be able to pull up the appropriate asset for the underlying dealership to have a warranty adjustment or go and get something fixed behind the scenes. We're providing that linkage where the Salesforce data will all, always exist because the products and, and uh, assets have to exist in Salesforce. We're providing that linkage to the visualizations uh, that are accompanied for the end user there. Now that provides a good breakdown of what RenderDraw is and what it does, but what does this look like in practice for customers and dealers alike? How does this change the experience overall. Here's Nikhil. I think just a few examples that really stand out for me or are top of mind for me is when I look at warranty checks. Warranty is a big area of improvement, of efficiency, of revenue for a lot of these car dealerships and OEMs. But to be able to do warranty checks with interactive visuals is something that hasn't been experienced in a greater detail at an industry level. And having to do that at within Salesforce can be a real game changer in terms of creating transparency, avoiding like, you know, uh, errors in, in the different warranty approvals that go through. And at the same time, the customer doesn't have to be in the dealership to be able to communicate what is happening with that warranty, why that part needs to be replaced, or even for a warranty recall. If, if a customer gets information from the dealership that XYZ part needs to be replaced, uh, as part of the warranty recall, rather than just receiving a message, they are receiving up-to-date visuals of why that part needs to be replaced. What does that part look like? And what impact does that have on the overall car stability, et cetera? So I think that is really top of mind for me. And along with that, when we look at the visual parts catalogs, I think most parts catalogs are, that I see usually are in the corner at a dealership, often not reviewed, often not updated. But when something moves to a digital landscape, then the point of updating it, keeping up-to-date versions, I think what is top of mind for me when I look at how that can make the service and parts business at a dealership more efficient. On the service parts and catalogs piece, we really see this as kind of a lowering the barrier to entry 
problem. So when we think about like a spare parts reordering scenario right now, it is that customer going into the dealership and look, taking a look at the catalog, the, the actual paper catalog and flipping through until hopefully they can identify the right part for their specific model or VIN or, or something along those lines. You know, we kind of flipped the paradigm on its head there where we can already pull up a, a given customer's records of what car they bought, including different options and those kind of things, and then automatically show them the ap appropriate and applicable parts for, for their given uh, car or, or truck there. So it, as part of that, we're really just kind of easing that process and making it a lot smoother for the dealerships to go out and sell these parts and spare parts because the customers that can more easily find them and can really be sure that they're buying the right part for their given car, because obviously it's the car that they, they purchased, not just one that's listed in the catalog. And Eric, to add to one particular aspect that you mentioned related to accessories, I think that's an area which is such an untapped potential for a lot of dealers. I know some dealers who do it exceptionally well. There are some dealers who do not do it as well as the others, but enabling dealers to have information related to accessories. For example, I have 18 inch rims on my car. If I want to see what 20 inch looks like, I can get that visualization rather than having to go into the dealership and, and do so many other things. If I want to get a spoiler or, or a mud flap, et cetera, like I would exactly know what the future state can look like. And that is what my vision is. What I envision in the future is that if this is done right, this can really help dealers understand the potential of accessories and how to communicate with customers correctly when it comes to sharing information about accessories, sharing information about what's that going to do to the structure of the car and what is the difference between brand accessories or OEM approved accessories and, and third party accessories. That's, I know for a lot of OEMs, you know, your warranty is void if you use outside uh, accessories. But at the same time, that differentiator is something that we need to educate the customers about. And what is a better way than doing it via visualization? So I think that's that's a great use case that I expect to gain more momentum as we continue to progress in this direction. When we think about this also, like two points on this, like the first one is visualizations are only as important as they are relatable to the experience that we're we're trying to provide or what we're used to. So the customers, if uh, traditionally, if you go to a website that has automotive accessories, any auto manufacturer or dealership, oftentimes those accessories are shown in an isolated environment by themselves. We're giving the opportunity and the ability for dealerships to show those alongside the car that was actually sold, including the color, uh, trim, and like like you mentioned before, rims and that kind of thing. We can match that to what the customer already purchased. So they're getting a better understanding of what those accessories look like on the vehicle that they are owning or looking to own. And that's going to make them much more likely to purchase the accessory moving forward instead of it just being an isolated photo. It's fairly clear the value that this brings to the customer dealer interaction when you lay all of this out, which raises a major question. Why hasn't something like this hit the market before? And as Eric breaks down here, the answer is that it actually has, but for a long time, these sorts of projects were really strictly expensive custom builds that were out of the reach of a lot of dealerships. Here's how Eric puts it. Something that really goes overlooked with a lot of these visualization projects. Visualization oftentimes is kind of a custom project, meaning there's a lot of custom code. Somebody that knows 3D visualization has to be involved with it. And really that kind of large barrier is the entry for any, any kind of dealership or OEM that's trying to enter into a, a marketplace where they have visuals because maintaining those visuals is extremely difficult. So once again, we flip the paradigm there where we're starting with CAD models, which are most often available through uh, the parts manufacturers and also uh, OEMs themselves. And starting with those CAD models and then using our Salesforce admin friendly components, uh, Salesforce administrators actually have the ability to set up these visuals and maintain them moving forward into the future. So these auto dealerships and the OEMs are actually becoming self-sufficient using our tools instead of having a custom project and then a custom project going on for life. We actually have a way to do this in a scalable nature that also has uh, the ability to reutilize Salesforce administrators for a, a heavy duty task like visualization. We make it pretty easy for, for that to happen using these uh, Salesforce administrator friendly uh, components right inside of Salesforce. That need for scalability, for usability, is really why RenderDraw's Salesforce integration is so vital. It makes these capabilities accessible to dealers in a way that they might not have been prior. A lot of companies tried to do that in the past, but there was always a hardware element involved. But the fact that this can happen natively in Salesforce, 
I think it's a real game changer for us because as we continue to differentiate, even in the automotive space, what we are trying to do with our customers is to bring that additional value that a lot of other CRMs do not bring. And I think this is a great value addition towards what we are trying to solve in the automotive industry and, again, not use any hardware for it. Yeah, exactly. Being native to Salesforce is really kind of a huge differentiator for us. You know, companies believe in Salesforce. Salesforce is built on trust. Us being part of that Salesforce ecosystem really allows us to kind of lay on the trust that they already have with Salesforce. And then us being native to Salesforce actually allows us to have integrations with partners and other products very easily. And that's actually our go-to-market strategy. We we find out what problems are being solved by other apps and other applications out there, like Automotive Cloud, for instance. And then we provide a visual interaction layer on top of that. So the uh, overall user experience is much better, even though the same workflow is being done with the Salesforce data beneath. That's very helpful, Eric, because if I look at the product life cycle of a vehicle and how often products are updated, how often the parts are updated, etc. And as a new model comes in uh, to a new country, you know, product localization, parts localization starts to happen. So this means that the relevancy of our solution with render draw will continue to make sense, even if the products the parts are changing on a weekly or even on a daily basis because we will have the ability in the dealership's hands to keep the information up to date and not have stale information uh, in the systems. Absolutely. We actually have a way to automate this as well to where uh, any kind of 3D CAD file or, uh, gets uploaded into the Salesforce ecosystem, like the Salesforce org. Uh, we can automatically convert it and then associate it with a given product or part. So. In that sense, we're like committed to the idea that it, this has to be 100% scalable. Otherwise, it'll never work because it, it'll always fall down to uh, we didn't have enough 3D resources or we didn't have enough uh, capability to provide the visualizations we want. So scalability and uh, kind of low, lowering the barrier to entry are, are the utmost importance for us to actually be able to deliver this to customers and have it be a winning formula for dealerships and OEMs. And taken as a whole, this really gets at the heart of what makes RenderDraw special. It reimagines what's possible when it comes to the customer experience in automotive and brings those real human interactions back into the equation. Too often, everybody thinks about, uh, especially visuals, you, you kind of assume that's a little bit uh, in a vacuum where people see the visual when they're buying something and then that, that's kind of where it ends. And really what we're trying to do is kind of take that good experience when you're looking to buy your car, you know, go go through and configuration. Every, everybody enjoys doing that. We're looking to take that experience and then apply it towards uh, service and, and then also the maintenance and then uh, interaction with the dealership itself. So that experience is uh, of the utmost importance and it's really going to be the biggest differentiator for those uh, that want to succeed in the future in the, in the automotive world and those that, that really won't, I, I would say. Regardless of what you're buying, as a customer, you always want to be treated as an individual. It's no surprise that that extends to our cars. They're such a monumental purchase and such a pivotal part of our lives that when we are buying and customizing them for the first time or when we're taking them in to be serviced, we as customers want the businesses that we work with to see us and our vehicles as individuals, not items on a checklist. That means taking into account our driving history, the issues that we've had in the past, and the particular add-ons and options that make our cars, well, ours. And that is where ultimately RenderDraw is really transformative for dealers and OEMs. It both simplifies the incredibly detailed experience of understanding a car, of spotting particular issues, recognizing specific parts, and it also allows, while visualizing that car, to visualize the key customer data that exists alongside it, all of which is stored in one central location within Salesforce. And the end result of all of that is being able to, at a glance, from your computer, recognize not just a car, but a specific driver's car. And that is a whole new level of customer experience. This has been Transformation at Work. Thank you so much for listening. And thank you again to Eric and Nikhil for your incredible insights on this episode. Transformation at Work is, as always, produced by Jaren in collaboration with Salesforce. I am Jeff Stormer, your host and producer. If you enjoyed the show, consider leaving us a five-star review on iTunes or Spotify or head to jaren.com to sign up for email updates when we release new episodes. Until next time, thank you again for listening and we hope to see you again soon. <laughs>